evening, Mr. Gatica. Good evening, good evening. All right. Tomorrow is the test for units seven, eight, and nine. All right, seven, eight, and nine. So today we're going to review. We're gonna review lessons A and B. Remember, we will review the grammar. I will give you examples. And then I will ask you questions to see if you understand the language, okay? First, open your book to page 67, page 67. This is the first lesson that's gonna be on the test. It's unit seven, lesson A. Unit seven, lesson A. In this lesson, we talked about our circle of friends using relative clauses. Let me give you some examples. I have a friend who lives in Japan. My best friend has a car that goes zero to 100 in four seconds. My dad's friend has a guitar which is worth $2,000. My dad's friend has a guitar, which is worth $2,000. These are examples. My question to you is that we have three different relative pronouns. We have who, we have that, and we have which. We use who, that, and which for people or things, right? Plus, who is for people or things? People. 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 Very good. Ms. Aquino, good evening. Good evening. We use which for people or things? Rambas, no? Which, which? Oh, things. Things. And we use that for ambas, or in English, yes. both. Both people and things. Okay? Now, of course, of course, of course, of course. Who is more common for people? And that is more common for things. Now, if you use that for people, no problem. Okay, there's no problem. But who is more common? Which is not very common because it sounds like an ugly word. You know, which like bruja. It's an ugly word. But who in that is normal. On the test, you're going to have a question like this. And let's see if you can answer the question. One question is going to be like, choose the correct sentence. Okay, you need to choose the correct sentence. The first sentence is going to say something like, I have a cousin who lives in China. 
Or the second option is I have a cousin who he lives in China. And the third option is I have a cousin who lives him in China. Class, what is the correct answer? A, B, or C? A. A. Very good. Very good, very good. A is the correct answer. B is not correct. Tengo un primo que él vive en China. ¿Por qué decir él otra vez? Remember, who is a pronoun? Who is a pronombre? Así que ya no es necesario volver a repetir la persona o la cosa otra vez. Así que volver a decir he o decir him no es necesario porque ya tenemos who, que en este caso representaría a cousin. Okay. They're pronouns. Pronouns, pronouns, pronouns. Another one. My grandma. My grandma is a person I admire. My grandma is a person who I admire her. My grandma is a person who I who admire her. Class, what is the correct sentence? A, B, or C? B. A? <gasps> thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Aquino. Ninguna. Michelle, what do you think, Michelle? I think B. B. Talia, Giancarlo, what do you think? I think A. A? Giancarlo, what do you think? Mm, might be A. All right, all right. And the correct answer is definitely A. It's A. My grandma is a person I admire. Now, in Spanish, this sentence is not possible. No, it's not possible. Mi abuela es una persona yo admiro. Sounds weird, right? Let me explain this. My grandma is a person who I admire. Mi abuela es una persona que yo admiro. Okay. Ambas oraciones están bien. Both sentences are good. I don't know if you remember this rule. No sé si se acuerdan de esta regla. You can omit who, that, and which if there is a subject after them or after those words. Pueden omitir who, that, y which si hay un sujeto después de esas palabras. En este caso, después de who, está <clears throat> I. I es un sujeto. Entonces, tenga lo, tengo la opción de omitir la palabra. Entonces, si yo quiero traducir esta oración, my grandma is a person who I admire, es mi abuela es una persona que yo admiro. Si lo quiero traducir sin el who, solo así, my grandma is a person I admire, sería mi abuela es una persona que yo admiro. No importa si lleva who ahí o no, en español la traducción va a ser con quién, ¿no? Mi, o que qué, o con qué. My grandma is a person I admire. Mi abuela, mi abuela es una persona que yo admiro. Tienen la opción de omitir la palabra siempre y cuando hay un sujeto ahí. Let me give you another example. Another example.
Class, what is the correct sentence? C. 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 Very good. She's the girl who I love. Okay. Now, what can I eliminate? Who? 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 Right. I can eliminate who, and the sentence is still correct. She's the girl I love. La niña o la mujer que amo. Ok, ¿y por qué puedo eliminar who? Porque hay un sujeto después de who. Tengo su opción. Now, what is the difference? ¿Por qué eliminaría who? ¿Por qué no? Cuando eliminas el who, no le quitas la importancia. Así que si quieres escucharte más, escucharte como lo que, que estás diciendo es muy importante, agrega el who. Porque el who le agrega énfasis. O el that o el which le agrega énfasis. Y solo se puede eliminar who, that y which si hay un sujeto después de la palabra. En este caso, la A no es correcta porque lleva her. Y recuerden, who es un pronombre y representa a la niña. ¿sí? Porque, ¿Por qué voy a usar dos pronombres para referirme a una persona? En la misma oración. No. Nope. El who elimina el uso o la necesidad de tener que usar otro pronombre. Igual la B, her. No. Nope. Y en esta oración, la, en esas oraciones de my grandma, estoy hablando de mi abuela y who. Y her está mal y her está mal porque están ahí de más. So the correct sentence for that is A. My grandma is a person I admire. One more example. One more example. She's a type of woman who loves novels. She's a type of woman what loves novels. And she's the type of woman which loves novels. Class, what is the correct sentence? A. Hey. Hey. Good. En este caso, ¿puedo omitir who? No. 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 ¿Por qué? Porque no hay un sujeto después de who. Very good. No se puede omitir el who porque no hay sujeto después del who. You cannot omit who because there is no subject after who. You need it. You need it. You need it. Mr. Gatica. Yeah. Uh, but letter B also can be correct or not. Porque what es como que también, ¿no? Pero se puede usar para personas. Ah, no, no, no. En este caso, what es solo para preguntas. What is only for questions. Okay. Es que la palabra que tiene muchos significados, ¿no? La palabra que... En inglés puede ser what, obviamente que con el tilde, what, puede ser where, no, no, where, no, perdón, puede ser which, puede ser who, puede ser that, o puede ser which, bueno, which ya lo dije, ¿no? Puede ser what, which, who, o that. Pero el what es solo para preguntas. Only for questions. Y ya el which, who y that son conectores. Son conectores como en este caso. 
who, that, y which, que son pronombres y conectores que van dentro de oraciones. En este caso, who, that, y which, lo usamos para dar más detalles sobre una persona, una cosa, ¿no? En la primera oración, I have a cousin who lives in Canada. Te estoy dando más información de mi prima o de mi primo. En las otras oraciones, te doy más información de mi abuela, una persona que yo admiro. En la tercera, tercera oración, de una niña, la niña que yo amo. Estoy especificando a la niña, o sea, donde más detalles de esa persona. ¿Ok? But so, and basically, no. Do not use what unless it's a question. All right, Natalie? Ok. Ok, thank you. Good. Questions, class? No? No. Okay. Important things. Who is for people? That is for people and things. And which is for things? Remember, if we use who, that, or which, do not use another pronoun. Si usamos who, that, y which, no usen otro pronombre, como he, him, her, she. Nope. That's the third thing. Y la cuarta cosa, pueden omitir who, that, y which si hay un sujeto después de who, that, y which. Tienen la opción. You have the option to omit who, that, and which if there is a subject after those words. Okay? Those are the four things. Plus, let's go to the next lesson. No, Mr. Gatica, déjeme tomarle una foto. I got you, I got you. One moment. There you go. Please. Thank you. You're welcome. Everybody, are you ready? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'll give you maybe five seconds after the explanation so you can take notes okay take notes class in the next lesson we talked about dating 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 means going out with a potential partner right maybe maybe a future boyfriend or a future girlfriend is dating in this lesson we talked about that in this lesson, the objective was to talk about dating using phrasal verbs. Talk about dating using phrasal verbs. Now, phrasal verbs, they're a little difficult. But remember this. Phrasal verbs... are a verb plus a particle or preposition. Hold on, I'm participle. A phrasal verb is a verb and a particle or a preposition. ¿Cuál es la diferencia entre particle y preposition? La verdad no sé, no importa. Lo importante es que sepan que son dos palabras. Two words, the verb and the particle or the preposition. Now, phrasal verbs are a little difficult because sometimes the meaning is not clear. Let me write that. Phrasal verbs can be difficult because the meaning is not clear or the meaning is not literal. The meaning is not literal. For example, to go out. Yes, go out puede ser salir, but it can also be to have a boyfriend. 
or to have a girlfriend. For example, if I say, I go out with Jennifer Lopez. I can say, Jennifer Lopez is my girlfriend. I go out with Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony is my boyfriend. I go out with. No tiene nada que ver con salir. No tiene nada que ver con ir. No tiene nada que ver con afuera. Porque go es ir. Out es afuera. Pero go out no tiene nada que ver con ir afuera. Nope. Go out in this context means to have a boyfriend and a girlfriend. So phrasal verbs can be difficult because the meaning is not literal. Sometimes they have more than one meaning. A veces tienen más que un significado, como go out, no, go out, salir, or go out, tener novio, or tener novia. And that's complicated. It's complicated. But for this lesson, there are like maybe three really important phrasal verbs. The first one is grow up. Grow up. All right, so grow up means crecer. You know, hablando de una persona o un animal. No de plantas. Y no de ciudades. Y no de crecer en tu carrera. No. You know, person, animal. Envejecer, básicamente. So, grow up. Look, what is the past of grow up? Grow up. Oh. Grew up, right? Grew up. Class, I grew up in North Carolina. I grew up in North Carolina. Michelle, where did you grow up? Grew up in Puebla. Thank you. Hazel, where did you grow up? I grew up in Mexico City. Nice. And Noemi, where did you grow up? I grew up in Mexico City. All right, all right. Mexico City is prominent in this group. Okay, that's one important phrasal verb. The second one is settle down. Settle down is sentar cabeza. Settle down. Of course, settle down tiene más significados. Pero estamos hablando de citas. So, sentar cabeza, no. Settle down. <clears throat> the past of settle down is settled down. Settle down, settled down. You add a D. The D sound. Settle, settled. Settle, settled. Settle down. Settle down. Okay. I settled down when I was 28. Senté cabeza cuando tenía 28 años. I settled down when I was 28. Noemi, when did you settle down? <clears throat> ¿Cómo se dice aún no siento cabeza? <laughs> ah, very good. I haven't settled down yet. Okay. I haven't settled down yet. Nice, Thank nice. You. Living la vida loca. All <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Michelle, when did you settle down? I don't know. I think when I start uh, work, I settled down in... I, when I was 21. 21, okay, young, young. Aquino, when did you settle down? I settled down when I was um, 23, 23, I think. All right, all right, good, good, good. Now, settle down. 
That's an important one. And the last one, the last one, the last important one is break up or break up with. Class, what is break up with? Romper o terminar. Romper o terminar. Very good. Break up with is for normal relationships, not marriages. No matrimonios, porque matrimonios is divorce. But break up with is romper, terminar una relación. In the past, break up with is broke up with. I broke up with her three years ago. Terminé con ella hace tres años. Or we broke up 10 years ago. Terminamos hace 10 años. Cuando usamos we para break up, ya no se usa with, ¿no? We broke up 10 years ago. Sería nosotros terminamos. Oh, yo terminé con ella. Eh, él terminó conmigo. Yo terminé con él. Pero si es ambos terminamos, like we broke up, ya no se usa with. I broke up with her three years ago. We broke up 10 years ago. We broke up 25 years ago. Oh my God. Okay. And well, on the test, you're going to have some questions like this. Just remember, I cannot give you examples. No, no les puedo dar ejemplos porque van a saber las respuestas. Just remember that the past of grow up is grew up. No growed con ed y no grewed con ed is grew up. Grew up. Class, repeat it to me. Grew up. Grew up. Grew up. Grew up. Yeah, it's como grew up, like a silla del carro. Grew up. I cry. <laughs> oh my God. Well, let's see. The next one is settle down. Look, settle down. Es como casarse. Pero la expresión marry down no, no existe. Ok, no es marry down. Y tampoco existe la de marry with. Marry with is not correct. Marry to, sí. I'm married to her. Estoy casado con ella. Or I'm married to him. Estoy casado con él. But with is not correct. So I'm married to. Estoy casado con él, con ella. All right, Natalie? Mr. Gatica, so we can, uh, we can say, um, for example, do you want to marry with me? It is incorrect. We have to say, do you want to marry me? Ah, you can say that. Yeah. Do you want to marry me? Yeah. Marry in this case. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, okay. ya cuando... O sea, nunca va con with. Nunca, with. Ne never, 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 never. Okay. okay. Ya si una de ustedes se quiere hincar y pedirle la mano a su novio, Will you marry me? Will you marry me? Or maybe Giancarlo, if you ask your girlfriend, will you marry me? Si se hace eso hoy en día, las mujeres ya piden matrimonio todavía no. I don't know. No. <laughs> no, not yet, not yet. All right, good. Will you marry me? Come on, las mujeres facturan. Now, will you marry me? Can I continue? Can I continue to the next? Lesson or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Remember, 
go out is to have a boyfriend and a girlfriend. All right. Okay, that was lesson B. I'm sorry for not changing this. But now we're going to go to unit eight. Unit eight, lesson A. This was a great lesson, in my opinion. Look, the topic is wishes. Page 77, please. In this lesson, the objective was to talk about our wishes and imaginary situations about the present or future. About the present or future. I wish I had a million dollars. In Spanish, this would be kind of like, ojalá tuviera un millón de dólares. Ojalá tuviera un millón de dólares. Now, ¿qué haría con esos millón, con ese millón? What would I do with that million? If I had a million dollars, I would buy some land, build affordable apartments, and rent them. Si tuviera un millón de dólares, compraría un poco de tierra o una propiedad. Construiría departamentos baratos, económicos, y los rentaría. If I had a million dollars, I would buy some land, build affordable apartments, and rent them. Si tuviera un millón de dólares, compraría. Mm, how do you say that in Spanish? Compraría, no se puede decir compraría un tierra. Terreno. Un terreno. ¿no? Un terreno. Compraría un terreno. Construiría. I don't even know how this. No sé cómo conjugar ese verbo. I think it's like that. Okay, that's it. Now, the important thing is that, you know, when you use wish, this is the structure. Subject plus wish or wishes plus subject plus past form. That is the structure. That is the structure for wishes. Yes, I know it's complicated because we're talking about the present or the future. If I had a million dollars, I would buy some land now. Or I would buy some land tomorrow. But we talk about the present and the future. And we need to use a verb in the past. Aunque hablemos del pasado... Perdón, aunque hablemos del presente o del futuro, tenemos que usar un verbo en el pasado. That's for wishes. And for the second conditional, eso es lo que se llama la otra oración. You're going to use a subject plus... I'm sorry, if plus the subject 
plus the past form of a verb. Complement, comma, subject, plus would, plus base verb. And that, my friends, is the second conditional talking hypothetically about the present and the future. Let's see. Lily, how do I say, ojalá tuviera más tiempo libre? I wish I had I had uh, más tiempo libre. Uh, I had time free time more free time. Very good. Very good, very good. Mm, Salma Ojalá pudiera volar. Uh, I wish I could fly. Very good. I wish I could fly. If I could fly. Si pudiera volar. If I could fly. Aquí no, how do I say iría a Italia? Um, I will, I, I will go Italy. To Italy. To Italy. Very good. If I had more free time, si tuviera más tiempo libre. Uh, let's see, Hazel, si tuviera más tiempo libre, jugaría Free Fire? <laughs> uh, I will play Free Fire. I will play Free Fire. If I had more free time, I will play Free Fire. Okay. Good. I think that you understand that, but let me give you some more examples. On the test, you're going to have something like this. I wish A, I could run fast, B, could run or C, ran. What is the correct answer, class? A. 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 Good, good, good. I wish I could run fast. Why not B? Because it, it doesn't. I say it in English, Lily. It doesn't have a we, subject, right? Yeah. And the same thing with letter C, right? Doesn't have a subject. So I wish I could run fast is the correct thing. Another example of a sentence that's going to be on the test is <clears throat> if la 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 more free time, I would clean my house. A, had, B, I have, C, I had. What is the correct answer, students? C, B, C, C. if I had. Why? Wow. I, you tell me why, Dalia. The path. Uh, yeah. From the path. Yeah, exactly, exactly. 
como estamos hablando hipotéticamente, usamos un verbo en el pasado. Si no fuera hipotéticamente, sería en el presente, ¿no? Si tengo tiempo libre, ahí sí. Si tengo tiempo libre es if I have free time. Pero aquí es si tuviera, es hipotético, imaginario. You know what I mean, Talia? You understand? Okay, yeah. Yeah, all right. Good. Let's see. Okay, that's all with this lesson. Please take your picture or screenshot and let's continue to the next lesson. Yeah. And if you have any questions, please ask me. Okay. All right, let's go. February 8th, okay. All right, class, in this lesson, Unit 8, Lesson B. We talked about life's little dilemmas. In this lesson, the objective was to talk about common problems that we have in our life. Using phrasal verbs. Yes, more phrasal verbs. Worry about, buy, for, borrow from. The phrasal verbs. How do I say preocuparse por in English? Worry about. Worry about. Siento como que ese es el más importante de esta lección porque preocuparse por la gente suele decir que es worry for. Worry for, porque el por suele ser for. Pero en este caso, este por no es for, es about. Estoy preocupado por mi abuela. I'm worried about my grandma. Lily, how do I say estoy preocupado por mis calificaciones? I'm worried about my... I, I don't know. How do you say? Great. My great? Oh, okay. Great. Good, good, good. Thank you. And Giancarlo, estoy preocupado por el examen? I am worried about my exam. Exam. Okay, good. My exam, the exam, same thing. Now, what is comprarle algo a alguien? Buy something... Comprarle algo a alguien. Buy something to, buy to? something for, buy something about. Very good. Actually, no, not very good. <laughs> My, it, it's for, <laughs> buy something for someone. Okay, buy okay. something for someone. Comprarle algo a alguien is buy something for someone. Or, yes. This is otro muy importante. Porque el A suele ser to en inglés, ¿no? Y la gente suele decir to, I buy something to. Pero no, no es correcto. El to es for. El A en este caso es for. En este caso. 
le voy a comprar un carro a mi mamá. I'm going to buy a car for my mom. Claro, hay otras maneras de decir lo mismo, pero eso es lo, la lección, ¿no? Una opción. I'm going to buy a car for my mom. How do I say, Noemi? Voy a comprar una casa. Bueno, voy a, a comprarle una casa a mi hijo. I'm going to buy a house for my son. House for my son. Good. No, son. Oh, my son, right? Yeah. Yeah, your house cannot have a house. That's weird. <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to buy a house for my son. So buy something for someone is comprarle algo a alguien. Y depende del contexto, también puede ser comprar algo para alguien. Okay. That's important. Comprar algo para alguien. So this sentence, I'm going to buy a car for my mom. Voy a comprar una casa, un carro a mi mamá. O voy a comprar un carro para mi mamá. You know, I don't know if, if, it's, if there's a difference. But those are the two translations. Okay, now, now look at the questions on the next page. Page 79. Es lo mismo del second conditional, pero en forma de pregunta. What would you do if you had a million dollars? I would buy land. Or oh, I'd buy land. Class, what is I'd? What is I'd? I will. Not I will. No, not will. I could. I would. I would. I would. Okay. I would. I'd es I would. Recuerden que la L de would no se pronuncia. Okay? No, no digan would. Es would. Would. Rima como la palabra bien. Good. Good. Would. Would. Madera. Good. Uh, it's like madera. Would. Like you, yeah, I remember that example. Like madera. The madera is wood. All right. My question is, what would you do if you had a million dollars? Let's ask Michelle. Michelle, what would you do if you had a million dollars? I don't know. I, I will much um, animals <laughs> for pet. I would what animals? Eat. You need a verb. No estoy el verbo. Ah. Okay. I would have much animals. Now, there's a problem. En la palabra much se usa solo en oraciones negativas. Then, nah, no sé. A lot no. of... More? Uh, uh, some funciona, yeah, some funciona. I would have some animals. I have oh. many, but I would okay. have a lot of animals. It sounds more, more common, more better. Well, better. I would have a lot of animals. Okay, Michelle. Good. Natalie, what about you? What would you do if you had a million dollars? If I had a million dollars, I would travel around the world and I would buy Food for stray dogs. Ah, very good. I would travel around the world and buy food for stray dogs. Natalie, what are stray dogs? Mm, perros de la calle, perros callejeros. Very good. Stray dogs, perros callejeros. Really important here. Es muy, muy, muy importante. Que después de would, se usa un verbo en su forma base. Remember that, please. Subject plus would plus base verb. Si no se usa el would, no es hipotético. 
Por ejemplo, si yo digo, I travel around the world. Eso es viajo por el mundo. Y suena como es algo que haces actualmente. Si usas el verbo en el pasado, I traveled around the world. Eso no es correcto. Eso es viaje. Viaje por el mundo. Y si usas I would traveled, combinas would con un verbo en el pasado, eso la verdad no significa nada, es incorrecto. Es wrong. Así que la única opción que tienes es usar would con el verbo en su forma base. I would travel around the world. This is correct and this is viajaría. Hypothetically. Do you understand class? Yes. Yes. Okay. On the exam, you're going to have a question like that. Van a tener una pregunta así donde tienen que usar would con un verbo en su forma base. Por favor, no cometan el error de elegir la opción con el verbo en el pasado. Ni el verbo con would y el otro verbo en el pasado. No, nope. elijan el que es con would y veo en su forma base para hablar hipotéticamente del presente o del futuro. Any questions? Okay, Natalie, you have a question. Mr. Gatica, and for example, in my, in my example uh, about travel around the world, I can say two times uh, would or not. For I example, would, would. Yes, no. For example, I would travel around the world and I would buy food for stray dogs. Just ah, yeah. one time? You can say it if you want. It's not necessary. Okay. But if if I say it just one time uh, in the beginning of the sentence, it's okay? Yeah, yeah. That's okay. a good question. Uh, Nali preguntó que si es necesario usar I would otra vez con el otro verbo. Y eso es lo que les, les estaba tratando de explicar a Lu anoche. No sé si escucharon que una de las, de los, de las funciones de AND es cuando vas a dar una lista, eliminar las palabras que se repiten. Eso incluye los sujetos y los verbos. Si ven de este lado, pues ya usé I would. Así que de este lado no es, no es necesario usarlo. No es necesario decir, I would, otra vez. Yo sé que esto no, no tiene sentido en español, porque pues, en español sería, viajaría por el mundo y compraría comida. Es imposible de eliminar el sujeto porque no hay sujeto en la segunda parte. Pero en inglés tienen eso, esa opción de eliminar el sujeto y el verbo cuando usan and. Ok, you have that option. Right. Eliminate the repeated words. Let's go to the next lesson. Unit nine, lesson A. Go to page 87, please. Page 87. Unit 9, Lesson A. I love this lesson. It was a hard lesson. We, we spent, what, like three or four days on this lesson? <laughs> but I know you will understand it by the end of this week. In this lesson, we talked about common technical problems using 
questions within questions and questions within sentences. Another word for these are embedded questions. And another word for them is indirect questions. Class, repeat after me. Embedded questions. Embedded, embedded questions. Embedded questions. Embedded questions. All right. All right. Good, good, good. Ojalá la escuche su celular. Now, ¿Puede repetirlo, Mr. Gatica? Embedded questions. Yeah, you said it correctly. Embedded. Embedded. ¿Y qué significa? Embedded questions means a question inside of a sentence or a question inside of a question. Okay. Yeah. Let me give you an example. Where is Julie? I don't know if that's how you spell Julie. Ah, let's say this. Where is Julie? Where is Julie? That is a direct question, right? Direct question. It's cold. It's dry. It's direct. Where is Julie? I can make it less direct mm -hmm. by saying, do you know? Do you know? Do you know where is Julie? Do you know where Julie is? Do you know where is Julie? Do you know where Julie is? Which sen which question is correct? Uh, the number two. Second one. The second one. Why? Mm, I don't know because I remember that you said before that we need to change the order of the sentence. Very good, very good. So in embedded questions, we flip the subject and the first verb. En preguntas, dentro de preguntas, cambiamos la orden del sujeto y el primer verbo. Okay. Let me give you another example. If I say, where was the party? ¿Dónde estaba la fiesta? ¿Dónde era la fiesta? Salma, how can I make that indirect? Do you know? Are you Do there, you Salma? know where? Mm-hmm. Is, is. Where, 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 where? Uh, the party was very good. Do you know where the party was? All right, yeah, it can be in the present, it can be in the past. Where will she be? Donde estará? Do you know? Giancarlo? Uh, where she will be. Where she will be. ¿Sabes dónde estará? Do you know where she will be? Okay, good. Entonces, con el verbo be y con los demás verbos es fácil. It's easy, except with two tenses. And we will practice them in one minute. Where has she been? Donde ha estado? Talia? Do you know where? She has been. She has been. Muy bien. Entonces, el verbo be es fácil, el futuro es fácil, presente perfecto es fácil. The thing that is complicated is the present and the past. Lo que es complicado es el presente y el pasado. So let's say this. Be careful. Be careful with the simple present and simple past. Cuidado con el presente simple y el pasado simple. 
un ejemplo de presente simple es What does she do? ¿Qué hace? What does she do for a living? ¿A qué se dedica, no? What does she do for a living? Class, is this question in the present or the past? Present. Present. Do you know what she does for a living? Okay. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué does? ¿Por qué si en la pregunta es she do? ¿Por qué es she does? Bueno, déjenme explicarles. Para empezar, se elimina el verbo auxiliar. Does. Se elimina. Se elimina porque does solo se usa en preguntas. Y aunque... Do you know what she does for a living? Es una pregunta. La estructura de la pregunta tiene que ser en, tiene que estar en forma de oración. Y en oración, ustedes saben que solo se usa un verbo para el presente. Por ejemplo, I like pizza. She likes pizza. I wake up early. She plays soccer. Solo un verbo. Un verbo. Y si seguimos esa regla, de solo usar un verbo para estructuras de oraciones, del presente simple, ten, tendríamos que eliminar el verbo auxiliar. El verbo auxiliar solo es necesario en preguntas directas, ya no en preguntas indirectas. Pero no podemos decir, do you know what she do for a living? Porque she do suena bien terco, está mal. Tenemos que usar el verbo en tercera persona singular con sujetos que están en tercera persona singular. Y en este caso, el do se convertiría en does. Les voy a dar otro ejemplo y si ustedes van a hacer uno. Where does he play? ¿Dónde juega? Do you know where he plays? ¿Sabes dónde juega? Igual eliminamos does y ajustamos el verbo y le hacemos tercera persona singular. Now it's your turn. ¿Cuándo trabaja? Do you know class? When, when, when she works. When she, what? she works. She when works. She works. Do you know when she works? Exactly. ¿Entienden eso de does? No. No? No, really? Mr. Gatita. No. Es... Uh -huh. really? O sea, sinceramente, esa es una lección que no, o sea, nunca entendí. Bien, o sea, por ejemplo, la, la primera parte de como embedded questions, o sea, de cómo, cómo cambiarla para así, ah, sí, pero ya así, por ejemplo, con el dos y todo eso, o con el bin, yo ahí me perdí y nunca ya no agarré el hilo. El bin, ok. No sé qué tiene que ver el bin con esto. Es que recuerdo que, o sea, recuerdo que era una lección donde, donde nos enseñó todo eso, o sea, creo que no nada más era dos, no recuerdo muy bien, pero eran varias cosas que se cambiaban según el, según el tiempo en el que en el que se estaba hablando algo así, porque recuerdo que un ejemplo es algo así como que mmm, que has estado comiendo que has estado haciendo, algo así no recuerdo, pero era algo como con Bean, Iren, algo así Mr. Gatica, no, pero no recuerdo muy bien Ah, no, eso fue una pregunta que hizo Gustavo y no tiene nada que ver con la lección. ¿Ok? De hecho, eso es lo que veremos la próxima semana. Pero no, no te preocupes por lo de Ben. ¿Ok? Don't worry about Ben. Now, esto se les complica. ¿Por qué? ¿Qué parte no entienden? ¿No entienden que tienen que eliminar does y ajustar el otro verbo? Sí. ¿Por qué? No sé, Mr. Gatica, por ejemplo, en la, en la primera parte es como más sencillo porque no es como que tengamos que cambiar el verbo en sí, sino más bien como reacomodarlo. Y acá es como confuso porque, por ejemplo, a mí por inercia quiero igual como acomodarlo, pero no, porque ya no es ese verbo, o sea, tengo que cambiarlo. Y ay, no sé. 
Entonces, entiendes el concepto, pero no lo quieres hacer. ¿O cómo? O más bien me pierdo, o sea, no sé cuándo es que sí lo debo de cambiar y cuándo no, porque recuerdo que no era en todos. Ok, ok. Y luego Please, algunas veces. Please, sorry, Natalie. I need to take a photo. Of the other thing? Yeah, please. It's, it, it disappeared. It disappeared. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Ay, le, envió, le envió WhatsApp. Ah, thank you, Natalie. Thank you, Natalie. Okay, now look. Look, look, look. Cuando la pregunta lleve does, elimina does. Cuando estés escribiendo o diciendo tu pregunta indirecta y solo agrega alguna vez el verbo. Let me write that for you. Cuando la pregunta directa lleve does y quieres usar una pregunta indirecta, cuando estés diciendo la pregunta indirecta, Elimina, does, y agrégale una S al verbo que queda. Let me give you, uh, let's see, what, when, where. How does she do it? ¿Cómo lo hace? ¿Cómo lo hace? Do you know how? Talia, ¿cómo se? Ah, Talia. Natalie, ¿cómo sería? Do you know how? No, do you know how she does? Very good. Do you know how sure. she does it? Hold on, give me one moment. Let me close my door. Oh, right. Sorry, the baby was crying. How does she do it? Do you know how she does it? Another example. This one is for you, Miss Aquino. Okay, Mr. What time does she wake up? Do you know? Según mm yo, -hmm. what time uh, she wakes? Yeah. Y yeah. ahí el dos, uh, ya no, uh, ya, ya. Es que en la de arriba igual había tú. Ya, yeah, exactamente. Ah, y a veces okay. eso va a pasar, ya. Yeah. Okay, una más, sabes. una más, porque ya, ya veo que ya le agarraron la onda. Ahora para confirmar la onda, let's do this. What does she eat for breakfast? Natalie or Aquino, do you know what? Me, what please. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, do you know what she eats for breakfast? Very good. Onda confirmada. Mister Gatke, porque en la primera sí se sí permanece el dos y en las otras dos ya no. Excellent question. ¿Cuál es el verbo de la pregunta? Do. 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 Uh. El verbo es do. Así que sería, do you know how she do it? Pero no puede decir how she do it. Sería how she does it. Es decir, el otro verbo, ok, hay dos verbos en la pregunta directa, ¿no? Does y el verbo principal. El verbo principal sí se, sí se queda. Y ya solo al verbo principal le agregas una S. Okay, let me give you another example, Natalie. O sea, me sería tica, realmente como quien dice el dos, el primer, el how, how does she do it, ese sí se está eliminando, pero como quien dice permanece, porque al do se le agregó la S. O sea, no es como que se haya quedado el mismo dos. Exactamente, that's perfect. Ah. 
<laughs> all right, all right. Look, class, nos vamos a ir un poquito overtime. Okay, si se tienen que ir, adelante. Si se pueden quedar, thank you. Okay, ahorita es su momento de irse sin estenirse. O se van a quedar. Are you going to stay? Five minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, okay. So, esto es con un problema con tercera persona singular, ¿no? Third person singular. In the present. Ahora, vamos a hablar de el presente que no es tercera persona singular. Simple present. Not third person. No tercera persona singular. What do they do for a living? ¿A qué se dedican? Esto sería, do you know what they do for a living? En este caso, lo voy a escribir. En este caso, cuando estés diciendo, escribiendo una pregunta indirecta con este tiempo, o ese tipo de pregunta, elimina do y ya. That's all. Eliminamos el auxiliar. Do. Bueno, eliminar el auxiliar. Do y ya. Si la pregunta lleva dos dos, un do es auxiliar y otro do es el verbo principal. El verbo principal se queda siempre. Another example. Where do they play? ¿Dónde juegan? Do you know where they play? Solo se elimina el do y ya. Porque pones el sujeto antes del verbo. Y si eliminamos do, pues el sujeto ya está antes del verbo. Y no se tiene que agregarle ese porque solo se le agrega ese a tercera persona singular. Y en este caso, pues, they es plural. It's not singular. I think that one's easy. Eso es un poquito más fácil. But let's see. Let's see, let's see. Natalie, when do they work? Do you know? Do you know when they work? When they work. Perfect. Michelle? How do they do it? You know how they do it. Vamos a dramática. Eric, do you know how they do it? Good, good, good. Giancarlo, what time do they wake up? Do you know they wake up oh, what time they wake up very good do you know what time they wake up salma what do they eat for breakfast um do you know what they eat for breakfast very good Breakfast. Breakfast. All right. Class, do you understand? Yes. 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 Yeah. A little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> no, I say I said a little bit. Well, that's better than nothing. Yes. Because, because you were confused, but now you understand a little bit. 
And I think yes. uh, click. click. It's, it's, there's going to be a click. Don't worry. I, I know it. You're very smart, Natalie. So I know you're, you're going to, you're going to, you understand it, but you Thank just have you. doubts. I can do it. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, the last one, the simple past. Ese también es confuso. This one is also complicated. And this is why. Where did... No. What did she do for a living? ¿A qué se dedicaba? Okay. Do you know what she did for a living? For a living? Exactly, Talia. Exactly. Talia, what about this one? Uh, Where did they play? Do, um, you, do know? you know where uh, they did play? They did play? No. Where they played? No. Uh, played. Um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. In the first example, the third person, the verb, it's not is a um que termine con s. Ah, no, porque es el pasado. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Good, good. Auto learning, auto learning. I love that. Now look, cuando la pregunta directa lleve did y quieres usar una pregunta indirecta cuando estés diciendo la pregunta indirecta elimina did y cambia el verbo principal es decir el otro verbo al pasado recuerden no toda la vida es preguntas indirectas pero si quieren menos directos pues eliminarían did y ya el otro verbo lo cambian al pasado por ejemplo do cambió a did y aquí eliminamos en la segunda pregunta where did they play eliminamos they y play cambia played Now, what time did she wake up? ¿A qué hora se levantó? Do you know, Hazel? What time? Uh, sorry. Uh, do you know what time she... Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember... Uh, how do you say wake up in past? Help her, help her. <laughs> woke, woke up. Woke up. Woke up. <laughs> woke up. Do you remember? Do you know what time she woke up? Good. Miramos did y el otro lo cambiamos al pasado. That's it. Now, Miss Abundes. No, 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 Miss Abundes. Miss Aquino. What did she eat? For breakfast. Do you know what she um eat and eat no? is past participle. Not past part um, past. Past it eight. Eight. Oh sorry for breakfast. Okay, okay. <laughs> otra, otra. Esa no me gusta me esquino. Another one. <laughs> All right. Okay, Mr. Etika. Hmm. When did they work? ¿Cuándo trabajaron? Do you know? Do you know uh, when they worked? Worked? 
worked. Worked. Yes. Okay, so three important rules. Three important, important rules. Natalie, you have a question? Yes, Mr. Gatiga, justo le iba a preguntar que porque en la primera ejemplo de simple pass, eh, entonces porque se había quedado el did, pero no, ya vi que se eliminó, pero él, él sigue diciendo did porque es el pasado de do, ¿verdad? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Natalie, you're understanding it. Yes, it's more clear now. Thanks. Wonderful. I'm happy about that. And class, lo último sería los verbos, los verbos preposicionales que se separan, como turn on, prender la luz, turn on the light, turn the light on. Y si en vez de decir light, dijera it, Sería turn on it or turn it on? Turn it on. Turn it on. Very good. El pronombre siempre va entre el verbo y la preposición. Recuerden eso. El pronombre siempre va entre el verbo y la preposición. Nunca fuera. Never out. Y eso es lo que vimos esta semana. This week. Okay. Okay, Mr. Etika. All right. Well, we are finished. I think you're ready. Minimo 80, okay? <laughs> okay. At least at least 80 for everybody. And well, study, please. And good luck. Everybody, you may leave. And Mr. Kino, tell me. Ah, solo es para cuando me toca pagar. Es que no me acuerdo. Let me see. You too, Michelle? Yeah, please. El cuatro, el cuatro, the fourth. Me too. Giancarlo, the tenth. Okay. okay. Me, four, el yeah. cuatro? Yeah, Aquino, el cuatro. Uh, okay. Lily, el cuatro. Dalí, el cuatro. Michelle, el cuatro. Giancarlo, diez. Okay. Salma, fourteen. Me too. And okay. that's all. Solid thank time. you, Mr. Gatica. Bye. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Have a good night. Sigue teniendo la misma tarjeta, ¿verdad? Yeah, yes. Sí, sí. Siempre yes. pregunto eso para confirmar. Gracias, ah. gracias por si, por si me asaltan, ¿verdad? Porque vivimos en Acapulco. No, oh, es que también he cambiado la otra. Es de sacradito. Usted vive en la zona nice de Acapulco. Ahí no asaltan. I know, I know. Well, yeah. thank, you. thank you, guys. Have a good night. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Take care. Bye-bye.